Initially, our production was all based on outsourcing. And once we actually had a shop, we we began feeling the pain points of relying on suppliers fully. We're at their mercy if they wanted to raise prices, change minimum order quantities, if lead times that were supposed to be two months took four months, there wasn't much we could do about it. And so that's really where the idea of starting to bring some of that production in-house came from. My name is David Calzada and uh, our company is K-Power Industries. So we have about 12 employees. Our, our space is about 12,000 square feet and we're divided up between a machine shop, uh, wiring production, we do fabrication here as well, and then we do all of our product development on vehicles uh, in this space. The Miata has been such a popular race car for many, many years, really the most popular, I think, by numbers. So that's really where, as a Honda enthusiast for a lot of years, you know, I looked at the K-Series and thought, you know, this is really the perfect engine for these cars. It's lightweight, it actually weighs less than the factory engine, you know, just a high revving, fun, naturally aspirated engine. So there's a lot of components that are needed. Um, initially, the, the big components were uh, transmission adapter parts. We're taking a front wheel drive engine and putting it in a rear wheel drive car. So we needed to make it work with a rear wheel drive transmission. You know, so we make adapter plates, we make engine mounts, we make different shifter components, we make different you know, coolant housings and passages, different, just all sorts of different adapter parts. And really, the first step we took to get production in-house was thanks to Will Bretman, who is on our team. He and I were talking one day, and we had, again, our little shop, a couple cars in it, and he came by to help with some things, and he, he really had the idea of, hey, you know, we could buy like a used Haas VF2 or something like that, so we could start doing some prototyping and then eventually start doing some production in-house. When we first bought our old machine, it was 22 years old at the time, so it was already, you know, a couple of decades old, and we really put that thing through the ringer. We ran it a lot, five, six days a week. We're still making parts on all our 20 plus year old machines, but the new ones just are on another level. Higher RPM spindles, higher rapids, more technology. For example, we didn't have any probing until we jumped into a new machine, and that helped us speed up our setups, it helped us not have to teach guys how to use an edge finder. It's much easier just to show them how to probe a part or instead of touching off tools with you know, a gauge block, using the tool setter is you know, just so much easier and faster. You know, having HFO Chicago in Elk Grove has been really nice. You know, especially when we're buying older equipment. If we're buying an older piece of machinery that needed to be serviced, you know, we looked at some mills of other manufacturers and it really was like, well, this is great and this is a good price, but if we can't get parts for it easily, we're going to be in trouble. We've talked you know, pretty extensively about adding a fourth axis to one or two of them, um, doing a pallet changer eventually, and just what else can we do to improve the efficiency of you know, what we're doing. So we've kind of gone from you know, having one old machine to a nice little fleet of five machines that are doing great, and now we're kind of looking at next step as our volume continues to grow.